Increased patrols and an alert going out in Coronado after two teenagers had a brush with suspected predators. Ring cameras capturing one of those incidents. Restrictions easing in San Diego just days before the statewide reopening. The changes coming with the yellow tier and how business owners say that will help. An SUV plowing into a local dentist's office. Why he credits COVID safety precautions with helping save people from that crash. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Thank you for joining us. I'm Virginia Cha. We begin with this breaking news in Rancho Peñasquitos, where an SUV plowed into a dentist's office. Now, it happened in a shopping center along Black Mountain Road. The dentist telling us an elderly couple was in that car when it came crashing through the lobby. He says it could have been much worse if it hadn't been for the waiting room being empty of patients because of the COVID safety measures they have in place. But drove right through and just destroyed our lobby. Six, six chairs that normally are occupied by patients were absolutely decimated. Wow, that's so fortunate. Instead, those patients were waiting in their cars. No one in that office was hurt. The couple in the car was checked out. They appeared to be in shock, but they were not seriously hurt. It's not clear how exactly the driver lost control of the car. Coronado police say they're stepping up patrols in their neighborhoods after two suspicious incidents involving strangers approaching teenagers. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell spoke to the mother of one of those teens and has details on who police are looking for. Coronado police are asking the public to be aware of their surroundings after receiving two reports about men approaching teens. I spoke with the mother of one of those teens. She says her son was not harmed, but she wants the community to be aware of this situation. Police say over the weekend, a 16 year old girl was walking a dog in the 400 block of D Avenue when she was approached by a man who grabbed her by the arm. They say she screamed and managed to break free and run home. Police say this ring video snapshot shows what the man looks like. It was taken from a neighbor's house. And then Tuesday afternoon, police say a 14 year old boy who was walking home from school was stopped by a man driving a black SUV near the 300 block of H and I avenues. They say the man asked the teen if he needed a ride to the base. And when the teen said no, the driver took off. At this point, investigators don't believe these two incidents are connected, but they are asking people with information about either to come forward. Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. This is new today. A lawsuit has been filed by the family of Ashley Babbitt, the local woman who was killed by police during the Capitol rioting. Babbitt's family wants to know the identity of the officer who shot Babbitt. That officer is now facing is not facing charges after the DOJ investigated. Babbitt's family says it shouldn't have happened because she was unarmed and not an immediate threat. That investigation found that Babbitt was among the rioters who illegally stormed the Capitol building and was shot while trying to get further into the building by climbing through a broken window. South of the border, at least seven people killed, dozens injured after a bus crash near Rosarito. The bus was carrying about 50 people when the driver lost control. The bus ran off the road. Witnesses told our news gathering partner Televisa that they thought the brakes may have failed. Several people did suffer major injuries in that crash. They were taken to a hospital. We will bring you updates later today as we find out more. Well, as we showed you live yesterday when it was announced, San Diego County now moving into the yellow tier, the least restrictive tier in the state's long running system. The state is getting rid of that system, though, in just a few days. But until then, being in the yellow tier means even fewer restrictions for businesses across our county. With us moving to 50 percent and then eventually 100 percent, that provides us the opportunity to make make more revenue. Businesses hoping the changes this week, coupled with reopening next week, will bring them a much needed boost after a rough year. The main change coming into the move with this yellow tier is higher indoor capacity limits. Gyms, for example, can now have up to 50% capacity inside. You can find a full list of those changes on 10news.com. 
And while that move into the yellow tier will only last a few days, it could be a sign of the progress San Diego is making heading into the statewide reopening next week. Quick look at the most recent case numbers. You can see 71 new cases in this latest round of testing, a 1% positivity rate. Cases have been trending downward in San Diego, likely due in part to the vaccine rollout. Nearly 2.1 million San Diegans, you can see, have at least one dose so far. This morning, a deadly rollover crash in Campo. It happened about 3.30 this morning along Buckman Springs Road. The CHP says at one point the car veered toward the shoulder, even went off the road. They say that driver then swerved the other way, striking a tree before the car overturned. The driver and a passenger were thrown out of the car. The CHP says it doesn't look like either was wearing a seat belt. The passenger, a 26-year-old woman, was killed. The driver suffered major injuries and had to be airlifted to a nearby hospital. Hospital. That driver is facing DUI and manslaughter charges. Well, talks between the Biden administration and Republican leaders over the president's infrastructure bill are breaking down. As the president takes off for his first overseas trip while in office, a major part of his domestic agenda appears to be hitting a roadblock. Senator Shelley Moore Capito, who was leading a group of Republicans negotiating that bill, says the president cut off talks with the group. They moved the goalposts on me a couple times and, um, you know, they just decided to walk away. Instead, the White House is now working with a bipartisan Senate group, which has unveiled a new proposal, which includes $761 billion of new spending over eight years. That's more than Republicans had proposed, but far less than the $1.7 trillion proposed by the president. California may be getting ready to reopen, but many countries around the world are still dealing with large numbers of COVID-19 infections. That has prompted some people to flee to our border. ABC 10 News reporter Jared Aaron takes an in-depth look at the surge of people arriving on San Diego's doorstep and how local groups are trying to help. As the pandemic continues around the world, people from some of the hardest hit countries are looking to the U.S. for safety and health. That's brought a lot of them to our border. And they're from countries that we usually don't see in San Diego. There are people coming in from Russia. There are people coming in from uh, Africa. There are people coming in from Haiti and other parts of the world, even India and other places. They don't feel safe in the neighboring country or in any other country. They are only safe heaven is the United States. Vino Paginor is the CEO of Catholic Charities, one of the largest refugee resettlement groups in the county. They've been working nonstop to help. Get them settled, do some medical checks, get them to understand the culture and lifestyle here in the United States and get them integrated into our communities. According to numbers provided by Customs and Border Protection, aside from Central America, the top five countries of origin for people encountered at the southern border this year are Brazil, Cuba, Ecuador, Haiti, and Venezuela. All five have seen COVID infections surge since the start of 2021. When compared to previous years, the numbers show how those surges are fueling the flow of people seeking asylum. From Brazil, 987 people have been encountered this year by CBP agents from either El Centro or San Diego. That's already more than any of the previous four years. Cuba, 170 people. That's on pace for more than 2020 and nearly as many as the three previous years combined. Ecuador, 217. More than 2020, on pace to be more than 2019, and far more than 2018 or 17. Haiti, 1,053, on pace to eclipse last year and well above pre-pandemic numbers. Venezuela, 97, higher than each of the previous four years. Aside from those five, Paginor says they've also seen an uptick of people from India, where the pandemic peaked earlier this spring. CBP numbers show large increases from that country each month since the start of 2021. Paginor says all of that has led to language and cultural barriers for his group and others. He's had to find new employees and volunteers to help. We have to have those language and cultural skills so that we know how to treat them, how to welcome them in, and then provide them the knowledge and resources 
of what it is to be here. Monday, Supervisor Nathan Fletcher announced plans to start a county office of immigrant and refugee affairs to help streamline services for people coming to the border. Paginor says that will help, but he adds the pandemic and its challenges have already brought out the best in his people. And we look at this and history and we say this is the time the San Diegans came together to take care of our fellow human beings and be that rich region that shows to the world and to the United States that we can make a difference in our communities. Because they're coming from countries where infection rates are high, Paginor tells me his group tests everyone they help with for COVID-19. And if they are positive, they're quarantined before they get any assistance. He also says he knows numbers right now are high, but he expects them to level off over the next few years. Jared Ahrens, ABC 10 News.